Vertical video editing inside of Final Cut Pro has always been pretty awkward, and so it was for that reason that I created Pro Vertical just a couple years ago. Fast forward to today, and it is by far one of my most popular plugins, thanks to all of you. I am so incredibly excited to announce a brand new free update for all existing users of Pro Vertical. This update is absolutely jam-packed with brand new features, and the last feature on this list might be one of the best tools I've ever created. The first and simplest part of this update is I've upgraded all of the thumbnail graphics to be way more readable. Previously, they were kind of hard to read, especially when they're so small in Final Cut Pro, so now it will be a lot easier to find exactly what you're looking for. Now we get onto some of the content updates, and the first of those is there's been some additions to the social guides. Social guides are not just found here up in the titles, but you can now find them here in your effects. And what's really awesome about Final Cut Pro 11.1 is adjustment clips. So we could just select this and push option A, and now we have this new social guides as an adjustment layer, just like it was previously up here at the top but this also makes it so you can apply it to individual clips if you want to. Taking a look at the social guides, we can go over to the title inspector, and the first thing you'll see up here at the top is the notch safety zone. So if I check that box, you'll see this bright red bar up here at the top. This is just indicating all of the potential positions that a notch can be. I really wanted to make this individualized for the different phones and stuff and how they have their notches appear on the screen, but the major issue is that most platforms have completely different locations for the notch, and there's so many different variations of phones with different notch types that it made it almost impossible to include them all into the plugin. It really wasn't turning into an accurate representation of where a notch might be, so you just get this nice broad version of the notch display if that happens to be helpful to you. I've also added in this nice 4x3 safety zone, so you can check that, and this is just going to give you a good idea of where everything will be previewed over on Instagram, because as many of you know, they completely changed the interface to be 4x3, so this is a great way to see how it's going to show up on your actual timeline wall. I don't know what Instagram calls that. Your feed, that's, that's the word. Yeah, this just gives you a good visual representation of that. So those are the updates to the actual social guides, and of course I still have the option of rotating this if you are working on a 16 by 9 timeline. Definitely watch my first pro vertical video if you want more information on that. The next part of this update is I've added four brand new titles. The first one is this liquid neon look, and this is just heavily inspired by the liquid glass. It's not a perfect one-to-one -one replication or anything, but it's super fun. You can of course just write in whatever you want, and it's going to fit to that text box. We can go to the title inspector, and there's a whole bunch of options here like refraction amount and how much glow there is. Another title is this quick pop title, and it's just a super dead simple, pops into place really quick, just like so. It also comes with this nice little outline, and you can even add in a drop shadow really quickly just using the different settings here. And of course, this will just change to whatever you want it to say. You can adjust the width of that outline change the color on it, so that's super fun. The third title is this Snapshot title, and I've made this to look just like a Snapchat caption, so you can write whatever you want in there. Pick up Pro Vertical today. And then you can actually just click and drag this anywhere you want on the screen, and it even has a nice little type-in animation if you want it, or you can go ahead and disable that type-in animation, which is kind of nice. And the last title that I've added is heavily inspired by Alex Hormozzi's shorts that I've been seeing on YouTube. It's this super metal title is what I'm calling it, and of course you can change this to say whatever you want. It has this metallic look to it, but you can of course jump in and change the gradient on this to whatever colors you like. So that's totally up to your own visual flair and taste. But it also has that kind of nice metallic sheen on the outside edge. So those are the new titles, but I've also added in seven new backgrounds. First on this list is this new color ray background. It's nicely animated. It's got this nice wave. You can change these colors to whatever you want. You can up the waviness. So there's a whole lot of control that you can have there. Additionally, I've added in this floating titles background. So this is kind of cool if you have a whole bunch of the same word that you want to show on screen. We could just call this subscribe. 
and now all of those are going to update for you. You have a ton of control over the different emitters here. You can really crank it up if you want to. You can adjust the scale like crazy, the scale randomness. We could add a drop shadow to everything. And if you want to, you can actually just completely remove the background by dropping the opacity. So now we just have a whole bunch of our floating title all over the screen. I've also added in this gradual grid, which is really nice. It's just a very elegant background. You can, of course, change the gradient on it as you want. So that's kind of fun. Then there's this gritty grain, which is just a simplistic dark background with a ton of grain. I've seen this all over on shorts and Instagram and stuff. So you can definitely try that out. You can change the colors of this if you want to. So that's kind of fun. There's also this infinite title option. So you'll see that I have infinite versions of this and I can have this say whatever I want. And you can adjust stuff like the spacing on it should you need to. So that's kind of handy. You can choose if it's animated. You can choose how fast that animation is playing out. So there's really a lot of control there. Then there's this super gradient. It's a very simplistic gradient that will just go on for forever. You can, of course, change the colors of this to match your branding better or whatever you want. But it's just a nice, clean, simple background. And last but not least is this topographic melt background, which is inspired by topographic maps. This is really great for like a travel channel or something like that. You can go in and change these colors to whatever you like. So let's just maybe change this over to like this kind of magenta pink whatever color and we got a completely different look. We can up the speed if we want to. We can have the evolution happen. So now it's kind of a morphing map. We can increase the first, second, third and fourth layer strength so you can get completely different looks. You can adjust the outline width. We can get rid of the noise if we want to. And of course, we can adjust the drop shadow on everything, which is super fun. So I really like how this background turned out. I think it's really fun. So those are all of the title additions, but there's some really exciting effects too that I've added. For example, we have this new CRT filter, which is just inspired by CRT televisions. You can increase the blooming amount if you want to. You can get rid of the fisheye if you want. We can increase the prism so we can make it look really degraded, bring up the waviness, totally up to you. Lots and lots of options here. You can even make it so you can see more of the pixels and the grid. So really like how this effect turned out and it works on titles, which is really fun. Next, I've added in this quick grain so you can just apply this onto any video and you'll see it's just a very simplistic grain filter. Super easy to apply. You can change the blend mode on it if you want to. So there's some simple controls there to get this looking how you want it. but it really is just about adding texture onto your videos. I've also added in this nice hover animation. So let's say, for example, I have this arrow and I want this arrow to be bouncing. Let's just apply the hover animation to it. And if we push play, now we've got this floating arrow. We could even go into the video inspector and change it to half range. And so now it's much more of a bouncing animation, which is fun. And of course, you can adjust all of the settings on this arrow, getting it exactly where you want to. We could change the colors on it. And this is all previous features that were available. We could change that over to a chalk effect. So there's just a ton of options for this hover animation. I use them all the time in my videos and now you have easy access to them inside of Pro Vertical. Now this next filter is one that's just really fun. I've been having so much fun playing around with it in my own videos, but it's called the Super Extruder. Let's go ahead and apply my quick pop title, very simplistic title, but we can go ahead and apply the super extruder and immediately you can start to see stuff taking place. So I can drag this extrusion around as if we want. And if I push play, you'll notice how it's actually really nicely animated throughout. We can go over here, we can increase the repeats if we want. You could change the colors on it if you want to. You can adjust the angle, the distance, but you can also adjust the back size. So I really like this for making everything look like it's just popping from infinity. Super fun to play around with. You can change the blend mode over to light wrap for your text. So the text is actually receiving a little bit of the glow from behind it. But we can also just change it over to something like overlay. So this is just going to give us a completely different look. I really like how this is turning out. And then finally, I have this add noise option. So this just adds a little bit of grain noise to the top of it, makes it look a little bit more retro. So it's just a super fun effect and I'm really excited to see how people use this in their own videos. One thing I will quickly mention is you might have an issue. Let's say I wanted to apply it onto this video that's up on top. I'll go ahead and apply Super Extruder and you're not really gonna see anything happen because this particular video is 16 by nine. So you can see this bounding box. 
That's where that particular video ends. But if we very simply right click and select new compound clip, and then we apply the super extruder to that, we now have all of these options for this extruded video, which is super fun. And you can see how that effect is working. So just make sure you apply stuff into a compound clip first before applying super extruder. This is just a limitation in Final Cut Pro and putting it in that compound clip should resolve those issues. Another great addition of Pro Vertical is the 10 new light leaks, which can all be accessed over here in my transitions and they're under light leaks. We can shorten or lengthen these as much as we want. So I'll go ahead and do that and push play. And there's the first light leak, which looks really nice. It's got some grain to it. And we can even go in and change the colors of it. So we can change the hue on it. We could adjust the saturation. We could increase the value if we want it to be brighter. We could get rid of the noise altogether if we want to, which could look totally different. We could also have it distort. So the bright parts of the image will be distorted as that flare is going through, which looks really, really cool. And the last and possibly best feature that comes with Pro Vertical is custom splits. So previously, I had split screens for two and three videos, but it was always a little bit awkward. I was never super happy with the implementation. It worked relatively well, but it could have been so much better. And so in this update, I have created possibly one of the best split screen tools for Final Cut Pro. And like I said, it's included in this update. So as you can see on my timeline, I have five videos that I would like to show in a vertical display. Previously, we were limited up to three. Now you can make it as many as you want. I just chose five at random. To use custom splits, firstly, if you're working with 16 by nine footage, You'll need to select all of your shots, then come over here to spatial conform and change it over to fill. So now they are filling the frame and this effect can be properly applied. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and apply custom splits onto this top angle. The first thing you'll notice are the on-screen controls. So just by clicking and dragging directly on the box, we can adjust where we're seeing in our scene. So let's say I wanna look at this skyline. We can also click one of these corners and adjust it. So now we're getting more of just that skyline. Maybe I'll adjust it just like so. Now I can click on this over here on the right and drag that up. And that is going to adjust the position of the split. We're also not just limited vertically with the split, but we can also go horizontally. So you can make these as complex as you would like using this split screen tool, which is super cool. And last but not least is the offset. So if we want, we could actually zoom in on our video and drag that into place. So if there's a specific part of your scene you want to see more visibly, you can do that using the offset tool. So we have our first split in place. Let's just again apply this custom split screen to this next video. Let's drag this up to be just underneath that. Maybe we'll adjust the scale and offset, get it just like so. Maybe there's a little bit too much of this. So we'll just set it just like so. Really liking how that's looking. Next, we'll do custom splits again on this third one. Let's adjust the position of that, get it roughly into place, cut it down to our liking. Maybe we wanna do more of a half split or a three quarter split. We could do that, so we'll line that up. Then we'll, we'll do the exact same for this pink shot, get that into place and we'll offset it. I want this to be directly in the middle and let's cut off this edge here. And then finally, let's do the custom split on the last image and I just wanna see that cliff. And then we can go ahead and chop this up over to that one spot if we are worried about anything like overlap of different videos. And just like that, we have this really complex split screen all done directly inside of Final Cut Pro. There is so much customizability here and you can add stuff like borders, you can add drop shadow. It's really up to you how you want these split screens to look. Plus, they can all be easily animated so I'll just go ahead and show you for this topmost shot. We'll select build in on our animation. We could drag up the animation speed. And for my animation type, I'm gonna leave it as crop in because I really like this one. So if we go to the very beginning of the shot, we can push play and everything is going to automatically slice up into that little piece that we have cropped. Custom splits is going to change the game for vertical video editing. So I'm really, really excited to introduce this to all of you. Can't wait to see how you use this in your own edits. Now, if you've previously purchased Pro Vertical, I've just sent out an update email to all of you so you can download this. If you didn't get that update email, 
you should be able to use the previous email you received when you originally purchased it. And if you still can't find that email, go ahead and reach out to me using the support email down below. If you're excited about this new edition of Pro Vertical, maybe consider pressing that like button as it does tremendously help me out and maybe consider subscribing as I'm really trying to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Thanks so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.